At cabinet secretaries on Thursday arrived at the Fairmont Mount Kenya Safari Club for a four-day retreat which will be hosted by President William Samoy Ruto. The meeting, according to Statehouse spokesperson Hussein Mohammed, will bring together senior executive members including cabinet secretaries, presidential advisors and principal secretaries. Spokesperson Mohammed added that the meeting is set to review the steps the Kenya Kwanzaa administration has made since assuming office and also spell out key areas of focus to see the realization of their campaign pledges as the new year begins. Six of the 24 cabinet secretaries facing their biggest test since their appointment as they prepare to present to President William Ruto and his advisors the plan of how they intend to tackle major problems facing the country. Although all the 24 have been challenged to prepare a detailed strategic plan on how they intend to tackle problems in their respective ministries in line with the Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto, all eyes will be on the six who handle the most sensitive dockets including security, health, education, energy, treasury and agriculture. They will make the presentation at a high-level government meeting which opened on Thursday at the Fairmount Kenya Safari Club. Among those attending are the president's advisors, industry experts and principal secretaries. Sources at State House told Maisha Television the main focus of the meeting will zero in on six cabinet secretaries heading key dockets that could determine President Ruto's success or failure at the end of his first term and how the public will rate him at the end of his first year in office. The four-day retreat will focus on reviewing the steps that Kenya Kwanzaa administration has so far made in its first 100 days since taking over power. They are also expected to outline priority areas they intend to focus on this year. <laughs> <laughs> the retreat will also spell out programs that the CSS are expected to implement to fulfill Kenya Kwanzaa's campaign promises, among them reducing the cost of living, implementation of the competency-based curriculum, dealing with insecurity, and health sector reforms. The success of these first five years will depend on how we collectively confront the constraints we are likely to face. We will also be required to synergize as we pursue and compete for limited resources with innovation and well-informed investment being key solutions. As you will note from the program, it is three days of back-to-back -back sessions. With the people of Kenya holding high expectations, we are called upon to deliver now and therefore the sense of urgency is palpable. I look forward to the deliberations and outcomes of this retreat and in particular the development of an innovative work plan to drive our vision to fruition. State House spokesperson Hussein Mohammed said the retreat to be held between Thursday and Sunday will crystallize the implementation program of the government's plan for 2023. Among the CSS to be on the spotlights are Njuguna Ndungu of National Treasury and Planning, Kithure Kindiki, Interior and Administration of National Government, Mithika Linturi of Agriculture and Livestock Development, Davis Chirchir of Energy and Petroleum, Ezekiel Mashogu of Education, and Susan Nahumicha of Health. The six control the public-facing ministries and are also expected to control the largest chunk of the 3.63 trillion shillings budget that the parliament is expected to approve in June this year. The budgeting process is underway and education is routinely allocated lion's share followed by health. Simon Chalugui, the CS for cooperatives and micro, small and medium-sized enterprises, is also expected to come under sharp focus given that the hustler fund falls under his docket. By New Year's Day, Kenyans had borrowed 10 billion shillings from the 50 billion shillings kitty, which is said to be expanded next month 
to make it possible for borrowers to get as much as 500,000 shillings to start businesses. Ndumu, a former central bank of Kenya governor, will take center stage because he is expected to outline his strategy on how to reduce the high cost of living which hit a 67th month high in November and stabilize the economy so that more Kenyans can create and get jobs and grow the wealth that the government intends to raise taxes from the current 1.8 trillion shillings to 3 trillion shillings by the end of the next financial year. Among the issues the economist is expected to highlight include how his ministry intends to reduce public debt now standing at 8.563 trillion shillings and win the country from over-dependence on external borrowing. He will also be expected to show what he will do to reduce the inflation to at least 5% from 9.7%. Government plans to restructure parastatals such as Kenya Airways and Kenya Power and Lighting Company will also feature prominently after the president said about 10 such public funds will be sold through the stock market. On Wednesday, the Capital Markets Authority extended the suspension of the sale of KQ shares till December as government shops for strategic partner or buyer. Finally, Ndumu inherited 500 billion shillings in pending bills and he will be expected to show how these debts will be paid off progressively besides addressing the weakening shilling which at the start of the year was trading at 130 shillings against the dollar. This has led to a sharp rise in the cost of imports including fuel and farm inputs needed to jumpstart agriculture. In his New Year message, Ruto said he had a solid plan for economic recovery, explaining that he had taken a bold step to do away with subsidies, which he claimed were initially rolled out of for political benefit. Chir, a close ally of the president, is expected to dwell on how he intends to progressively reduce the cost of fuel and electricity, the two commodities whose prices have a direct impact on industrial production and job creation. He will also be expected to outline strategies to address alleged skewed revenue sharing formulas between mining companies and local communities and measures taken to establish a consumer protection oversight agency, among other key programs. Mashogu at Education will be expected to tell the president how his ministry plans to address issues arising from the move to domicile junior secondary school in primary rather than secondary schools. He is also expected to address the sticky issue of funding of university education given that public universities have dug themselves into a 56 billion shillings debt hall and the university students are yet to receive their loans even as they report for a new semester. The actualization of the president's plan to hire 116,000 teachers within two financial years is also expected to feature prominently given that teachers' salaries account for a large chunk of the ministry's budget. Nahu Micha, the youngest CS who is also in charge of health, is expected to outline measures her ministry has in place to reduce the burden of health costs on Kenyans. Implementation of the universal health coverage, reforms at the National Health Insurance Fund, shortage of drugs in public hospitals, and threats by doctors to go on strike in the event that ongoing negotiations with governors fail are among key issues to be discussed. She is also walking the tightrope as she seeks to strike a balance on how to actualize President Ruto's plan to establish level 6 hospitals in 6 new regions, eradicate malnutrition within 5 years, and establish a publicly financed primary healthcare program. Similarly, Linturi faces the daunting task of outlining how the government will feed at least 3 million Kenyans facing starvation, term high food prices, manage importation of genetically modified maize and rice, and actualize president's proposals to increase productivity of key value for food chains.
Kindiki also has his work cut out for him as he is expected to give his roadmap on solutions to insecurity, especially in northern Kenya, besides combating proliferations of illegal firearms, security threats in volatile areas such as West Pokot, Baringo, Laikipia, Samburu and Marsabit and completion of reforms in the National Police Service. He also has to outline his plan for dealing with the mushrooming organized gangs. So they say the outcome of the retreat will define the steps Ruto's presidency undertakes this year in addition to determining how this will affect Kenyans over the next 12 months. For Maisha Prime, Maisha Television, Ambuja Bejonia.